Peace. One of the topics I was going to explore for a while, and it's been sitting on my mind for a while, and you know, this is just a you know private thought, open thought type of conversation I wanted to give out to the public that I've been thinking about for a while. Uh, I think it was Ebro who said that they're going to be moving from rap to Afro beats and Latin music. And, you know, the analysis for all of this is just to kind of understand or, you know, just want to hear back from people's opinions about this in which, you know, I pretty much think about a lot of the times because I am a music head and I love music. But um, rap and R&B being outsourced for Afro beats and Latin music. Specifically, Afro beats being outsourced for R&B, well, R&B music being outsourced for Afro beats and Latin music. Rap is pretty much set in its way with drill. And besides drill, it's just the, you know, the regular trite 808 beats and, you know, people who are more like gimmicks getting a shot at being an artist more than actual applied skill. It's pretty much made a mockery now when it comes to rap in which anybody can be an artist, anybody can be a rapper. It takes no training it takes no skill or being in cyphers or spitting 16s to be an artist a lot of people just be like well if i could just say some random stuff on a record for women if it's sexual for men if it's about materialistic things and about sex then that's the thing that sells to be an artist and on top of that like i've always said a lot of times on my channel i find it very disheartening when they have a lot of these artists that come out of nowhere from when they used to be TikTok uh comedians or you know instagram comedians and then all of a sudden they're just like yeah i'm an artist now like excuse me who are you so my whole reason about that is this when you think about r&b nowadays you can't even really call artists r&b artists it's like a lot of them do not like to rid them they, a lot of them don't like to think of themselves as r&b artists instead they like to think of themselves as just artists that just happen to sing and the, the discouraging thing about that is I understand that when it comes to genres, they automatically evolve. You're never going to really have the same old genres pretty much in each generation. But R&B being a staple hold of American culture and rap being the staple hold of American culture, for that to be transferred out for Afro beats, it's just kind of like one of those sort of things is like, dag, there is no uniqueness to different genres that's out there. Everything becomes uniformed. And, uh, you know, I have no problem with Afro beats. I like Afro beats, even with Latin music. I see dudes like Bad Bunny, that's on the scene. But, you know, the question to be asked for the American public or even just around the world, basically, will rap and R&B pretty much be obsolete? We've already seen how it came to rap. It became, it had a resurgence of the boom bap era in 2011 to at least 2013, 2014. But after that, everything became more or less what it is today, where artists are not really artists because they've done all these different things to be an artist. They're just an artist for gimmicks. And uh, with R&B reached this experimental age since 2010, I wouldn't say, 2009, especially with ones that was previously rappers starting to want to pick up the mic to sing. And then after that, you had a couple of artists that wanted to dive into different genres in order to experiment, namely The Weeknd, when he started to come out with House of Balloons. And then a couple of other artists out there, say loosely, Brent Fayez and a couple of other artists out there that made sure to say that I'm not really an R&B artist. This is what I do. And this is how it is. Now, I do get from a lot of people that they say that R&B and rap is dead. And that it, it, there is no argument, there is nothing else to talk about. But what has replaced that is Afrobeats, because you find some type of more, how do I say, more, uh, uh, you know, relaxation and listening to Afrobeats more than anything. And I even see American artists jumping on the Afrobeats trend or wave because that's what they want to do. Even Afrobeats kind of confusing someone like me with Caribbean music, you know, I wouldn't say necessarily Calypso, but then a couple of other genres that's related to Caribbean music where it starts to become very confusing because the artists are actually African, not Caribbean. So it's one of those sort of things that I just wanted to put up on a table. One of the things that I wanted to think about. Give me your thoughts in the comment section what you think about this. Remember to like, share, subscribe. Peace.